And the problem that Hillary's got is in certain ways her whole candidacy is an act of ventriloquism from her husband. Who had somehow not yet defined the Clinton-Obama campaign as ugly tonight on the eve of the Wisconsin primary. Pull out your needle point and start making that letter U. Our fifth story on the countdown, the word thrown at Senator Obama by Clinton campaign honcho Howard Wolfson was plagiarism, a charge that sank Joe Biden's first presidential bid 20 years ago. But the purported victim of the plagiarism, Governor Deval Patrick of Massachusetts, says he and Senator Obama use each other's wordings all the time, and he has no complaint. On at least one occasion, Senator Obama explicitly credited the source anyway, and the issue of the overlap of language was discussed by both men in a Boston Globe article from April of last year. And oh, by the way, the polls in Wisconsin are all over the map. Them first. The picture from public policy polling, Obama 53%, Clinton 40 The Keith number, undecideds plus margin of error, smaller than the margin, 10.4%. A tighter race envisioned by WISC television, Obama 47, Clinton 42. Keith number there, 16. Senator Clinton in the lead in polling by American Research Group, 49-43, Keith number 11. And there are new hard numbers tonight from NBC News on the pledged delegate count. Obama at 1116, Clinton at 985. With that as the backdrop, Senator Clinton's opposition research team gifting media outlets with a YouTube clip of Obama supporter Deval Patrick saying virtually the identical thing in 2006 that Senator Obama did Saturday night in Milwaukee. Clinton spokesman Howard Wolfson calling it, quote, plagiarism. Clinton surrogate Congresswoman Stephanie Tubbs Jones denying that the campaign had ever made a charge of plagiarism, telling MSNBC this afternoon, quote, we're not accusing him of plagiarism. It was another station that specifically showed that the governor of Massachusetts made a statement, made a speech, and then they showed Barack Obama, the senator, making the same speech. Now you all draw the conclusion. Senator Obama staying remarkably calm when asked about the charges during a news conference this afternoon, saying he really does not think this is too big of a deal. He probably should have credited Patrick this time, but that the oversight did not indicate a pattern of deception. I've written two books, uh, wrote most of my speeches, uh, so I, I think putting aside the question that you just raised in terms of whether my words are my own, I, I think that would be carrying it too far. Deval and I do trade ideas all the time. I would add that uh, I noticed Senator Clinton on occasion has used words of mine as well. And there is evidence that Senator Obama has both borrowed ideas from Governor Patrick Deval before, uh, Deval Patrick before rather, and credited him for them as he did on December 21st of last year on the campaign trail in Portsmouth in New Hampshire. Senator Obama having said then, quote, don't vote your fears. I'm stealing this line from my buddy Deval Patrick, who stole a bunch of lines from me when he ran for the governorship, but it's the right one. Don't vote your fears. Vote your aspirations. Senator Obama also fitting in time over the weekend to steal some time, sorry, for this rescheduled meeting with Senator John Edwards, where Senator Clinton herself, the topic of the day for her, the economy, is now in pamphlet form. Forget the oral exam. She wants this primary to be an essay question. Our own Howard Feynman, senior Washington correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Howard, good evening. Good evening, Keith. If there's a newspaper story from 10 months ago in which Governor Patrick and Senator Obama admit they've used the same language, if Governor Patrick says, you don't have to credit me, and if there's at least one documented occasion in which Obama did credit him anyway, how much plagiarism is there in this? Well, this isn't about plagiarism, Keith. Uh, it's about looking for any way, that is, from the Clinton campaign, to slow Barack Obama's momentum. In terms of tactics, of course, the problem is that once you bring this up, um, it's a fairly easy thing to vet. Uh, the other campaign will vet it. News organizations will start vetting what the accuser says. And so far, there's uh, Senator Clinton's uh, send me quote from the, the uh, Coretta Scott King Memorial. It turns out the President Clinton had used the same line, send me, two years earlier in another speech. And the problem that Hillary's got is in certain ways, her whole candidacy is an act of ventriloquism from her husband. The John Edwards line from one of the early debates about, you know, how if we can keep track of who rents what at Blockbuster, we should be able to keep track of foreigners in the country. And a couple of months later at another debate, suddenly there's a Hillary Clinton line about how if we can keep track of who rents what at Blockbuster, we should be able to keep track of foreigners in the country. Was this a, a poor choice of a political knife fight by, by Howard Wolfson? Well, you know, they're looking for anything they think they can lay their hands on. Somebody saw this similarity here. I guess Joe Biden flashed before their eyes, but it's not that big a deal in the end. I mean, the problem that Hillary's got is in certain ways her whole candidacy is an act of ventriloquism from her husband. And the problem that Hillary's got is in certain ways her whole candidacy is an act of ventriloquism from her husband.
or at least some people view it that way. And Hillary isn't always known as the most authentic candidate that you've ever seen come down the pike. Very calculating, very scripted, and so forth. And as Obama says, I mean, he's a prize-winning writer who's shown his felicity with words a million times. It's not like anybody accuses him of being desperate to lift other people's stuff. I mean, he, uh, Deval Patrick was an African-American candidate making history in Massachusetts. Uh, Obama's tried to do the same thing in the country as a whole. They're running in the same track to a certain extent. And I Last uh, moment about the contretemps, and then we'll move on to Texas. The Howard Wilson answer to the question of, of the possibility that, that Senator Clinton had used other people's comments, whether her husband's or somebody else's, uh, Senator Clinton is not running on the strength of her rhetoric, and that's that's a great defense right there. Just attack your own candidate's <laughs> ability to talk. It's okay because she's not she's not an orator. I mean that's just I, that's just tone deaf. All right, Texas. Well, I agree. Yes. Oh, let me move on to that in the time we have left. The uh, opinion research for CNN came out with a poll this afternoon. Statistical dead heat: fifty to forty-eight. Uh, Keith number six and a half. Margin of errors: four and a half. Uh, the, 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 Howard, uh, the, the Washington Post they reported that, that the, the Clinton strategists were alarmed because the way the delegate rules work, the convolution of them in Texas means delegates won there will not reflect the popular vote. They've stated that Texas is the Clinton firewall. Is it fireproof? No, absolutely not. That's a scary number for the Clintons for it to be this close, this far out, even before Wisconsin and Hawaii. And it's not that convoluted, Keith. Basically what it does is reward with extra delegates those parts of the state that turned out strongly for the Democratic general election candidate in 06 and 04. Those are African-American areas. Those are liberal areas like Austin. That's why if Obama does well, he's going to win the lion's share of delegates. But I'll tell you this, I think Hillary's in it to the end, regardless of what happens on these things. I think she's going to fight for every Every super delegate that she can, all the way to the convention. Howard Feynman of MSNBC and Newsweek. His work is always his own on this broadcast. We know that for sure. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and the problem that Hillary's got is, in certain ways, her whole candidacy is an act of ventriloquism from her husband, 